doing that after all that snow shoveling with uh, a nice steam brew IPA from Lidl, brewed in Germany, but actually quite a good IPA. I thought I did enough shoveling yesterday, but uh, as you see, tidings of comfort and joy is still here. So I thought I would reward myself with a beer and a pipe, as is the custom in the shed of Shangri-La here. You're wondering about this, aren't you? Have I gone cob crazy? Yes, I have actually. Just fancy a cob in, in the last few days. And this one is uh, luminous. This was uh, my own bit of cob foolery. I can't really see it in this light, but you can see a sort of certain glow. And uh, when it's dark, it's very easy to find. <laughs> so. If we're doing uh, nocturnal celebrations, I sometimes use this one. And uh, I just coated a, something like a country gentleman with a luminous paint, paint and let it really cure a month. So there's no, it's actually an aqueous uh, acrylic paint, so there's no solvents or nasties in it. And it's all on the outside, of course. So don't see this any real risk and uh, well it's something different and uh, a bit uh, Christmassy and, and wintry and six millimeter and in it I switch gear a little bit on the uh, tobaccos away from all those Christmas ones and back to good old crooner C and D crooner, which is deer tongue, so that's a natural kind of vanilla flavouring, and I, I very much like it. It's um, slightly twist uh, in the flavour, just calling it vanilla, is something like a, a kiss of a minor kiss of aniseed or something, which makes it vanilla-like, but you you know it's not just regular vanilla and. This is a lovely uh, cube cut, which I like, um, with a lot of burly in it. So it's, uh, if you haven't tried Kruna, it's based on uh, a blend for Bing Crosby, of course, the great Kruna. So if any newbies are out there who think, well, that could be interesting. Most people like this, it's very popular, I think, as one of the deer tongue tobaccos. There's, uh, Gentleman Caller, there's several others, um, but uh, this is a good one to start with and also get some experience with cube cuts, which uh, um, basically, if you're having trouble with tongue bite or um, just fast burning uh, blends and it's too hot for you, a flake will slow that down, of course, but um, also a cube cut is a bit slower smoking, so and burning so so it's a nice one what did I talk about today uh, uh, good old Blake um, leave a link below um, to his channel commented on my last video about the McClelland uh, Deep Hollow about the uh, the blender at McClellan because we were all saying you know it's a real shame they've gone and the recipes have disappeared and that somebody didn't take it over um, and that wasn't really the wish of the owners of McClellan that someone takes it over and you sort of scratch your head a little bit about that and the loss of the knowledge but good old Blake credit to him, um, left a comment and uh, 
said, you know, uh, Ma um, Mike McNeil and Mary McNeil were a long time the, uh, and, and, well, they were the main blenders and owners of uh, McClelland. And the whole history of what it, what it meant was done in a couple of interviews on um, Pipes magazine. Now, anyone who's new, have a look and subscribe to Pipes magazine online. It's fantastic with the articles and the information. Um, and they also do radio interviews with, um, I think it's Brian Levine does these. And um, he talks to all of these personalities in, in the pipe and uh, tobacco world. And he's got a lot of the classics really you know people who are, were part of legends and building up uh, for example um, Carol Burns at Wilkie she worked at Wilkie um, uh, with her husband a long time now she just does uh, renovation of uh, uh, estate pipes um, but Wilkie even made their own pipes and she was a pipe finisher there but she knew she knows a great deal also about blending and she was interviewed um, on one of these radio podcasts and you can read you can read you just go online and go episode whatever the number is or with the the name of the person you're interested in and you'll find that little podcast radio um, click on it and you're off and you can you can listen to it so I um, thanks to Blake I did go to uh, 200 episode 200 and 202 and listen to uh, Mike McNeil tell the whole story about McClelland and how he started out and I tell you it was absolutely fascinating riveting a, a charismatic really interesting guy um, very much you know uh, uh, says what he thinks straight away very entertaining um, <laughs> and, and Brian Levine is uh, is kind of one of these uh, interviewers that sort of uh, jabs you with a stick as you go along so but if you take it as a joke it's all working you know uh, I think uh, Uncle Phil you had an interview with that with Mr. Levine, you know, it was uh, on the um, the Pith Helmet. That's right, the series. Um, but I think it's just his his method. But a fascinating interview, and you realise he said the pipe and tobacco world, certainly back then, was full of characters and. Uh, they were totally different to big corporate, you know. You knew people personally, and if you liked them, and if they liked you, they would do anything for you. So, he, uh, when he started, you know, it was always on the brink of bankruptcy and, and or going broke. He said for half of his life he, he was poor, uh, didn't have much money and um, you know uh, he works and, and has always worked seven days a, days a week. You can't believe what these people put into their, 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 their work. That was like their hobby and, and love you know and he was in it with his wife and they were a very good team he said his uh, Mary was the best taster. She she had like instant feeling of yeah. Put some of that in it, and that will correct that problem. But all kinds of problems with uh, you know quality and getting the right to tobaccos. And uh, once or twice he asked for help from uh, a supplier or a customer. Uh, it was mainly a supplier because he was selling to the big corporate outfits. And they liked him so much, they said, I'll tell you what, uh, Mike, um, 
we'll sell you at cost and we won't make a penny out of it uh, as long as you're around. I mean, who does that today? And, um, you know, he... It, it sounded fantastic how people would help each other and if they liked each other and they were all big sort of uh, personalities around there and really interesting <laughs> characters. So. Um, I, I just found it fantastic uh, how he'd uh, accrued so much knowledge. And finally, here's the answer to why McClellan didn't get taken over or somebody would carry it on. Because Levine asks, you know, well, you, know, you could have had someone trained up and take it over. And, you know, and he said no. He says, what I do, I couldn't even begin to explain to somebody to train them up. He says, uh, the best explanation, he talked on that for about half an hour, but it was, um, he says, it's like, uh, get 20 young people and teach young guys, for example, as an example, um, uh, turn them into Frank Sinatra's. He says, it won't happen. It won't happen. There was only one, and there was, you know, you can't, you can't nail down that magic that he did. And um, as a scientist, of course, I always think, well, if you go enough detail and process and watch every little thing. But I think he's more right than wrong, and uh, because he says so many times you had to correct something or put something right or compensate or and and he says it just came to him you know but without any rational why it came to him or to Mary and then he he made like again another perfect Mac McClellan blend you know so I understand it now why that couldn't go on because when he stopped that was it. He wasn't there anymore and it, it couldn't be done um, in the same way. Uh, I, I can imagine there's, there wasn't a lot. Um, remember that ISO 9000 bloody nonsense that with bureaucracy where we had to write down every process we had, uh, document what you do, do what you document, uh, you know, it's... Um, <laughs> this is the opposite of it, right? And some restaurants who adopted ISO 9000 and all, all of the series that came after it, they went bust because the food sucked. You know, they did everything perfect, but it, it just wasn't good at the end. And, and I'm sure he didn't do ISO 9000 or anything like that. It was, um, there probably was very little written, written down about how to do things and uh, that is somehow so human and artistic and wonderful <laughs> and unique so I know we don't have McLennan anymore that's really sad but uh, I understand it now after listening to those fantastic radio interviews and I will go to more of them and I thank you Blake very much for um, mentioning that because I'd, I'd forgotten after the Carol Burns one I'd listened to how good they are and how you can sit there with a pipe and listen to it and it's riveting what they've been through, who they met, um, all the personalities back there in the 70s and 80s and 90s, you know, these guys were there, you know, and oh, it was wonderful as is this blend wonderful, I uh, say so crooner, I, I got, this is one of the few ones, so at some point I'm going to say, everybody knows what my deep seller number one is, Walter Raleigh Aromatic, I did a video on that, but what about number two, three, four and five, and I don't have a spreadsheet, so I have to go and rummage around and try and size up what I've got. But one of them will be Kroon. I bought uh, 
at least uh, more than a pound, I know that. It could be a pound and a half or something like that, which is already much above my average of um, any blend. Usually I've got one or two tins, you know, this and that. But it is very agreeable and it won't bite you at all. So have a look at Crooner. That's definitely a recommendation for me. So not to go on too long, just wanted to uh, point out those fantastic radio interviews and uh, hope you're all doing well and hope you all started all right in January and uh, hope things are getting better for a good number of us in uh, YTPC who didn't have good times in the last uh, weeks and maybe even months but I hope the horizon is getting better every day for this new year. Take care everyone, look after yourselves, bye bye.